in this video i am going to start with light reaction actually photosynthesis, photosynthesis involves two phases it occurs by two phases they are light phase and dark phase now we are going to start with light phase that is light reactions so light phase also called as light reactions which is also called as photochemical phase so this light phase is also called as photochemical phase so what happens during this light phase let's see what happens this during this light phase so this is also called as photochemical phase so during light phase the pigments present in thylakoid membranes of the chloroplast absorb sunlight and convert that sunlight into chemical form of energy that is atp and nadph now this chemical form of energy which is synthesized during during light phase is utilized during dark phase for the conversion of carbon dioxide atmospheric carbon dioxide into carbohydrate that is food okay so now the steps involved in light phase are absorption of sunlight absorption of sunlight by what by pigments present in thylakoid membranes next splitting of water water splitting splitting of water and then release of oxygen release of oxygen and then electron transport electron transport and synthesis of high energy molecules synthesis of energy rich molecules energy rich molecules or chemical compounds energy rich chemicals chemicals that is atp and nadph so these are all the steps involved in light phase or photochemical phase okay so let's start uh, i will explain all these steps one by one while explaining about ets so let's start with ets now so now let's study electron transport system that occurs inside the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast okay so uh, while explaining about this electron transport system i'll be explaining all the phases of uh, light phase what are the phases of light phase what are the steps involved in light phase first step is absorption of sunlight by pigments second step is splitting of water third step is release of oxygen fourth step is electron transport and last step is fifth step of light phase is synthesis of high energy compounds that is atp and nadph okay so this electron transport system which is taking place inside the thylakoid membrane is of two types they are non cyclic electron transport and cyclic electron transport non cyclic electron transport system and cyclic electron transport system now let's start with non cyclic electron transport system so this is thylakoid membrane this is thylakoid membrane and this is the space occupied by the thylakoid membrane called lumen and this side it is called stroma so let's say this is the chloroplast let's say suppose this is the chloroplast inside the chloroplast thylakoid membranes are present like this these are stacked one above the other to form grana so this is one thylakoid so inside the thylakoid the space present inside the thylakoid is called as lumen so this is lumen part and the space which is present outside the thylakoid membrane is stroma that is matrix of the chloroplast which is again surrounded by the inner mitochondrial membrane okay so let's start with this ets non cyclic um, ets that is electron transport system so in this thylakoid membrane what is present photosystem 2 is present photosystem 1 is also present and in between photosystem 1 and 2 2 and 1 there are uh, different electron carriers in the thylakoid membrane associated with this thylakoid membrane so this is photosystem 2 the reaction center of the photosystem 2 that is chlorophyll a after absorption of light photon it gets excited it gets activated and hence electron extrusion extrusion occurs that means excitation of electrons occurs so when the electrons are extruded from the reaction center of this p680 that is photosystem 2 why it is called p680 we know because the reaction center of this photosystem 2 shows absorption maxima at 680 nanometers wavelength of sunlight and hence it is called as p680 so when the light photon of uh, light photon is absorbed by the reaction center of p pes2 
it shows absorption maxima at 680 nanometers wavelength of sunlight and two electrons are extruded and uh, uh, when the electrons are extruded or excited what happens it acquires positive charge the reaction center of this ps2 photosystem 2 acquires positive charge so when it acquires positive charge it becomes strong oxidant ps2 reaction center of this uh, ps2 becomes strong oxidant so what is oxidant oxidant is nothing but the substrate or a molecule which is able to oxidize another molecule which is able to cause the oxidation or breakdown of another molecule that is called oxidant so as it has become strong oxidant that is the reaction center of ps2 now it can oxidize the water molecule which is present inside this oec oxygen evolving complex now let's study what is this oxygen evolving complex so this oxygen evolving complex consists of manganese, calcium, chloride ions and it also consists of water molecule in it. It is also called as water splitting complex. So it is called OEC, oxygen evolving complex or water splitting complex or it is also called as manganese complex as it consists of manganese ions inside it. And this OEC complex is transiently associated, transiently attached or associated with this photosystem too, towards the inner side of the thylakoid membrane that is towards human side. Okay, so when the reaction center of this PS2 photosystem 2 has become strong oxidant, it causes the oxidation of water molecule which is present inside this OEC oxygen evolving complex. So this water molecule undergoes oxidation. Uh, re resulting in the formation of two protons, two electrons and one nascent oxygen. So this nascent oxygen is left into released into lumen, lumen part, this is lumen part and uh, protons are also left into lumen whereas these electrons are picked up by photosystem 2. Photosystem 2, it is strong oxidant, it is causing the oxidation of water molecule present in this oxygen evolving complex. Uh, because it has lost to get the electrons from this water. So the electrons which are lost from PS2 are, are restored to this PS2 by the oxidation, by the breakdown of this water molecule. So now what is the fate of this oxygen, oxygen, nascent oxygen which is released into lumen. So from lumen this nascent oxygen diffuses out of the thylakoid membrane into stroma of the chloroplast and from stroma again it diffuses out of the chloroplast and enters into the cytoplasm of mesophyll cell and from cytoplasm of the mesophyll cell it diffuses out of the mesophyll cell and, and reaches the leaf surface. Leaf surface. After reaching the leaf surface, it enters into atmosphere. So this is what the oxygen which is released as byproduct through the process of photosynthesis, which is coming from water by splitting of water, but not from carbon dioxide. We studied this previously in previous videos that the oxygen which is released through the process of photosynthesis is coming from water, but not from carbon dioxide. Right. Now, these two electrons which are released from photosystem 2 enters into pheophytin. Pheophytin. So, pheophytin is the initial electron acceptor of photosystem 2. This pheophytin is attached to the outer surface of this thylakoid membrane. From pheophytin, now electrons enter into plastopinone. So, actually this plastopinone is not an electron carrier it is actually a proton carrier and hence for the transfer of electrons to the next carrier that is cytochrome bf complex it consumes two protons from stroma stroma and it is reduced into pqh2 reduced to form of plastopinone now from this reduced form of plastopinone, two protons are left into lumen and electrons are transferred to the next electron carrier that is cytochrome BF complex. From the cytochrome BF complex, now electrons are passed on to the next carrier that is plastocyanin. This plastocyanin consists of copper and hence it appears in blue color. So this is the blue colored electron carrier which is present in the thylakoid membrane that is present that becomes the part of electron transport system of thylakoid membrane. Right. And one more point related to, to this plastocyanin is it is mobile electron carrier. So there are two mobile electron carriers in the ETS of thylakoid membrane that is chloroplast. They are 
plastocyanin and plastophenol. Whereas in respiratory electron transport, there are two electron uh, mobile electron carriers. What are they? Ubiquinone and another one is cytochrome C. Cytochrome C, a small protein which is attached to the outer surface of the uh, mitochondrial membrane, inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, now let's come back uh, here. Okay, so from plastocyanin, these electrons are transferred to PS1. So this PS1, reaction center present in this PS1, photosystem 1, also absorbs light photon and it shows absorption maxima. This reaction center, the chlorophyll A, which is present in the photosystem 2. Uh, shows absorption maxima at 700 nanometers wavelength and hence from this reaction center also electrons get extru extruded or excited which are received by FES. So the initial electron acceptor of photosystem 1 is FES whereas the initial electron acceptor of photosystem 2 is pheophyton. Right. Now from FES these electrons are transferred to FD that is peridoxin which is attached to the outer surface of this thylakoid membrane which is attached to P, uh, photosystem 1 towards the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane. From this peridoxin, now electrons are transferred to NADP+. When this electron electron uh, electrons are received by NADP+, it consumes two protons. Two protons from stroma. What is this? This part stroma. This part is stroma. This part is human. And this is thylakoid membrane. So from stroma, it consumes, NADP plus consumes two protons after receiving two electrons from FD and it is reduced into NADPH plus H plus. So this reduction of NADP plus into NADPH plus H plus is carried out, catalyzed by an enzyme NADP reductase. So like this, the electrons which are coming from photosystem 2 are finally transferred to NADP plus. That means the electrons which are lost from photosystem 2 are not cycled back to this Photosystem 2. Hence, this type of electron transport system is called as non cyclic electron transport. Non cyclic electron transport. Okay, here I would like to discuss some more points about uh, how this electron movement is taking place from one carrier to the another carrier uh, present in this ETS. Electron carrier present in this ETS. Okay, so the electron movement of electron from one carrier to the another carrier of this ETS is taking place according to the redox potential according to the redox potential redox potential okay if a compound is with high redox potential it can gain electrons if a compound or a molecule is with high redox potential it can gain electrons whereas if a compound is with low redox potential it can lose electrons It can lose electrons, right. Generally, transfer of electrons occurs from a compound with low redox potential to the compound, compound or a molecule with high redox potential. And this movement of electrons from a substance or a molecule or a compound with low redox potential to the high redox potential is called as downhill movement. So, this movement of electrons is called as downhill movement. And sometimes, usually this downhill movement of electrons occurs. And sometimes, they can be the transfer of electrons from the compound with high redox potential to the low redox potential. And this movement of electrons is called as uphill movement. Uphill movement. Okay. Now, let's see. In this ETS, electron transport system, which is taking place in the thylakoid membrane, where uphill movement of electrons uh, take, is taking place and where downhill movement of electrons is taking place. So the now, now uh, the movement of electrons from PS2, from the reaction center of PS2 to pheophyton is said to be uphill movement. And movement of electrons from pheophyton to PS1 is said to be downhill movement. And the movement of electrons from PS1, photosystem 1 to ferredoxin is said to be uphill. So what is taking place? Uphill movement, then downhill movement and again uphill movement is taking place. So the path of the movement of electrons which is taking place inside this thylakoid membrane that is during non-cyclic electron transport represents the letter Z. Hence it is also called as Z scheme. Z scheme of electron transport. As this Z scheme, non-cyclic tra uh, electron transport is uh, described by the scientist Hill 
it is also called as hill scheme of electron transport hill scheme of electron transport so this is all about uh, non cyclic uh, electron transport and in along with non cyclic electron transport actually in the thylakoid membrane cyclic electron transport system also occurs and in the next video i'll be explaining about cyclic electron transport hope you understood this concept clearly thank you students